Alrighty guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. So today, a little change of plans, kind of on a whim. Anticipated going to the California Delta, mainly because we have a tournament coming up in about a week and a half for the California Bass Nation stop number three. It's a tournament I definitely had marked on the calendar and don't want to miss. However, and I know I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but it's just true. California, Northern California has got more rain and not just like a little bit of rain, like a lot of rain. The atmospheric river, as they call it, it. Just had another one. Some crazy, crazy, almost seems like hurricane weather. Trees down, power lines down everywhere. But the point is, it of course took a toll on the fisheries as well, including the Delta. So basically last night I got a report that there's been some levee breaks in the Delta and there's a good chunk of the Delta that's actually closed. And then a big area too that is uh, idle only. So I don't know, as much as I'd love to go get the skunk off the kayak on the Delta this year, I just wasn't feeling the vibes. Scratch that, we decided to come to a place that I haven't been to in a while, Lake Tulloch. And there is some rationale. We actually have a Yakabass event in about a month here. Yakabass stop number three. So kind of a pre-fish, a pretty early pre-fish fish but you know I've only been here once and it was a couple years back so at least this day will give me a little bit of a lay of the land see what the fish are doing if anything with practice for tournaments and whatnot you can do as much google research youtube research forums tournament weights all that stuff on the internet but the best practice and preparation for a tournament is time on the water so even though it's a month early I don't think it's gonna hurt us it's just after seven o'clock gonna go drive down get the kayak loaded up launch the boat spend another day of fishing for today out on Lake Tulloch so see what happens Let's get started. I think we'll start with the spinnerbait on main lake points leading into coves. We'll take a little page out of the Shasta playbook. Got to play some interesting conditions today. Man, this water clarity is like perfect too. It's like ironically the exact same as what we were fishing at Folsom. Maybe a foot, two foot of visibility. I think really that's why the spinnerbait was getting crushed so good. We'll see if these fish are behaving similar. You know, the last time we were here was actually, well, the only time we were here, what, two years ago? And it was with Damien. Met up with Damien to fish this lake for the first time. It was a tough day. It was a fall day, if I remember correctly. And a lot of the fish were offshore, chasing bait, suspended. And it was a tough bite overall. It's just tough to locate those fish. But uh, Damien caught a few. I caught a, maybe one or two. Threw the depths 250 a little bit, and I had some pretty good followers in here. But I'm hoping, obviously, with the spring, a lot of these fish are more bank-oriented, a little bit more predictable. I'm assuming in a month they're going to be on beds, but you just don't know. Fish can come up in waves. We can get a big wave of spawners one weekend and then not so much the next. We could be dealing with post spawners if we get some warm weather soon. Or if it stays like this, my God, might be catching pre-spawners in a month too. But again, the goal today is just to get an idea as to what at least some of these fish are doing. Maybe uh, mark some waypoints for the tournament where they could be bedding or post spawn or pre-spawn. Pretty lake though. Very pretty lake. Oh, too. Oh, a smallmouth. Shallow spinnerbait fish. Not a big one, but in five foot of water on a spinnerbait, just like balsam. Eh, brown one to start our day. I forgot they have brown ones in here, too. All right, sweet. That was cool. That was fun. I like it when they bite a spinnerbait. 
So we're almost to the very end of a pocket. It, that was kind of my, my hope today is that we'd be able to get a bite back here. I know I should get my graph fixed, but it's not, and I don't have water temp. But finger test says it's about 52 degrees. Feels warm. Water feels warm compared to the air temp, so makes sense that these fish are back here staging. God, maybe even spawning. Smallmouth could be on beds back here. You never know. I think if we can get one more bite doing this, the majority of our day has to commit to pockets, coves, stuff like that. Skunk off the boat. I always like that. So nothing in the back of the pocket. So coming back to the area where we got our smallmouth bite with a worm. See if there's anybody else home. good that looks good Colin if we get bit on this it's gonna be a good one just leaving that pocket now that was the only bite we had smallmouth on a spinner bait no pattern solidified just yet still in search mode seeing a ton of bait actually that's the first shallow bait bowl i've seen man there's been tons of bait cruising the main channel what are you doing fish what's going on So we're pretty far up the creek now. I mean, there's not much more to go. And the water's actually cleaned up a little bit. And finger test, dude, I would say that's like 55 degree water temp. It's, it's like warm. So I don't see how there couldn't be some fish up here. 10.30, ugh, man. Already throwing some finesse. Oh, there's a bite. Oh my God, I just got broke off. <laughs> I cannot believe I just got broke off. weedless okay let's try that again shall we I'm like 95% sure that was a bite I felt something thump that Unless it just tumbled down a rock and then we set it into something sharp. I don't know. The fact that it broke off at the hook really makes me think it was a fish. Dang it. Man, I think I gotta get out of here. It's just not happening. Just not happening. It's weird. Everything seems perfect for it up here too. Water clarity, water temp, time of year. I must be missing something. I just got 
Yeah, what? Let's go to bike. I know that was a bite. He got a teaser. Oh, come on, get it again. And just tell me that you're wanting to eat the A-Rig instead today. Seeing swarms and swarms of bait balls. I cannot believe it. It's 12 o'clock and we only had one bite. Yeah, what a false alarm that was. the deal. It's big. Yeah, it's not. It's just fall off. Okay. I should have been listening to the signs. Sorry dude. Seeing a ton of bait balls. So he threw a bait ball in the tater. Except I wasn't seeing a lot of like streaks through the bait balls, that's the thing. I'd say that one was probably an 8 to 10 foot. We fished a little deeper, kind of on the outside of the grass line. <sighs> I don't know if it's another random fish or if that means something. 12-14, second bite of the day. were telling us what to do. It just it took me a while to get the hint. And out a little deeper too. See, it's like the bait's everywhere. There is so much freaking bait. Sometimes when there's like so much bait, I feel like the bite's harder, but I don't know. Maybe the A-Rig just kind of stands out a little bit. It's moving. I think a lot of this bait's stagnant for the most part. Maybe that just gets their attention a little bit more. All right. We may have finally figured a little something out. I got so stuck on that spinnerbait bite from Folsom. I was like, yeah, it should work here. And then it did. First like 30 minutes of fishing, but not a bite after that. I don't know. A-Rig appears to be the winner so far. I've cycled through just about every single bait. Yeah, I've thrown everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rods. I've thrown eight different baits, different areas, different depths. Hey, rig and eh, I just call it 10 foot. Oh, dang it, had one right there. Oh no. You can see him, he shot right back down. Three bites on the eight, well, four bites actually. That first one, I'm like 95% sure was a bite that we didn't get. Four bites on the A-Rig. It's just like what we said at Folsom, probably need to maximize our chances by keeping this in our hand 99% of the day. one all right boys we're on them now finally figure something out i was getting worried for a while there Our preconceived notions today did not work out thinking we'd catch them shallow and up in the creeks and they might be there i may have missed them but what we found today are pre-spawners fish moving up fish feeding on bait this is like right off the main channel too Moving on, I'm gonna try another arm of the lake. Kind of an interesting layout of this lake. Real, real skinny compared to other lakes. Yeah, we're just gonna keep going with that A-Rig. Fishing mainly main lake. Oh, 
Oh, the sun feels so good. Oh my gosh, that feels good. You ever take a shirt or a pair of pants right out of the dryer and put them on on a cold day? You get like that burst of warmth. It's like the best feeling ever. That sun poking out was like the exact same thing. <laughs> oh, please stay out. I enjoy you. I don't know what's up with this other arm. Really, in general, I haven't gotten a bite in a while. I wonder if it was just that little half mile stretch that had fish or maybe a time of day deal. I don't think I'm seeing as much bait over in this section either. I may have broken the cardinal rule. You don't leave fish to find fish. But it's not like we're on one spot. We were running bank pretty much the whole time. It's getting a bite here and there. So, I don't know. We'll give this a little longer. And if this arm isn't working, we'll go to another one. Almost two o'clock. I think I'll be out here for at least another couple hours. I mean, why not? I give, let's call it. We got a two plus hour drive home. It's four o'clock. Let's get back to the ramp, load our gear up, make the drive, and uh, I'll see you guys when we get back and we'll recap this very so so day of fishing at Lake Talk. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for today's day out on Lake Tulloch. As we mentioned in the beginning of this video, there was a purpose for today's fishing adventure and it was to get some really early practice for the Yakabass event next month, which is actually mid-April. And yeah, today did not go as planned. I was kind of utilizing my fulsome experience with that shallow spinnerbait bite, dirtier water, to maybe replicate that at Tulloch. As soon as we got there, conditions looked very similar. Of course, it was raining. It's been raining. Water is dumping into the lake. First 30 minutes, first pop we pulled into got bit almost right at the boat small mouth a brown one not too big but didn't matter it was a bite early on so I thought okay they're shallow they're doing what I think they should be doing again it's springtime I mean it's springtime I don't care if it's raining I don't care what the weather is these fish are ready to move up be shallow start feeding and that fish confirmed it for me so I thought we continued on and I'm not sure how many casting montages we had but there was a long period where we did not get a single bite so we kept moving on we kept covering water we went Went up that north arm, absolutely nothing. I'm not sure if I was just missing the bite, throwing the wrong bait, fishing the wrong depth. We tried a lot of stuff. We had eight rods with us today and we tried every single one of those rods, every single one of those baits up until that point. And after a while, I just lost confidence in that area and decided to turn around and fish our way back. One thing that was very obvious to me was the amount of bait in this lake. And it seemed to be really, really thick bait balls anywhere from 60 foot all the way up to 20 foot. Though I was kind of stuck on that spinnerbait single blade idea, I said, well, you know what? Why not mimic a bait ball? So we picked up the A-Rig. This is the rig we've been using as of lately. This is a Dark Horse custom A-Rig. It's got the five blades, Berkeley Champ minnows as our main baits, and then little Kitex as our teasers. 20 pound tactical P-Line fluorocarbon. This is a 7.6 heavy rod. And then one thing I did upgrade with the real size, this is a slightly bigger reel. Reel. Slightly slower gear ratio reel than what I've been using. This is a six four to one gear ratio reel. But anyways, that was our setup and that was the deal. I think within the first couple of casts with this A-Rig, and we did throw it other times throughout the morning. First few casts on a point, I got bit. 95% sure I got bit. Gave me some confidence, so we kept going with it. And then I'd say within 20, 30 minutes, we're throwing it a little further off the bank, maybe in about 10 foot of water, working it back. Got another bite, took me off by surprise. I don't know, do you guys ever feel like if you haven't had a bite? or a fish in a long time you almost like don't believe you have one for a second i think that's how i felt so got bit got that fish in the boat a rig fish large mouth i was like all right that's probably two bites within a small amount of time probably means something kept going with it got another fish same deal in about 10 foot of water this one actually happened to be next to a tree the area that these fish were caught in loaded with bait giant bait balls what was weird though i'm not sure how i can explain this but like i said the bait were probably in 25 30 foot of water whereas again I'm working this in 10 foot. So I don't know exactly how that works out where you see all the bait in 30 foot and you're catching them in 10. I don't know. Kept working that little stretch, slowly cranking that thing in and boom, got hit. Big bite, felt good.
good. Probably big fish of the day, maybe a three pounder or so. So happy with that. And then after that, we ventured off. We tried a couple of the other arms of the lake. The other river arms didn't have any luck. Wasn't seeing as much bait as that one particular arm. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. That was pretty much our day. Got off the water at four o'clock. I'm glad we had that little window of, of bites of fish because other than that smallmouth, it could have been a really tough day. Fun day, good uh, scouting report for myself for this body of water next month. I've got a few areas that uh, we'll keep in the back pocket that I think I'm gonna check out for practice next month for this tournament. Saw a lot of good stuff, made some waypoints. I think next month will be a really, really fun event. Guys, that's the video for today. As always, I thank you for watching, for coming along on the adventure, and I will catch you guys in the next video.